Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Miami Minutes, the podcast where I don't I don't know what we're doing here. I I don't know what we're doing here. Oh wait, we're here to talk about every minute of the hit slash citation needed uh, <laughs> kung fu classic Miami Connection, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan, and I am in fact working here. I am your other host, John Parker. <laughs> That's what I'm up to. <laughs> oh, this, again though, was, this is now we're in because now we're into prime Miami Connection. It's one of those ones where it's like, I don't have a lot of notes, but I, I got a lot of notes. Like, <laughs> <in terms laughs> Mental of, notes. Yeah. Because, uh, of course, yeah, minute 11 uh, begins with a befuddled and baffled Jeff glaring at his sister on stage. And it ends a minute later with the exact same thing. He's just doing it on a sofa now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's a wanton Jane. Mm, mm. And Jeff is not happy. He's in a fit of rage. <laughs> I will say, too, I li- again, making the notes. I'll get it eventually, but I was having to look at the chart to be like, okay, th- that's that. This is Jeff. <laughs> the guy on stage is John. Okay. <laughs> and then the other the guy singing is uh, da, 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 Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, e- even I do it. Um, I-, I know Jeff now off by heart, but uh, a lot of the band, I don't. <laughs> well, to be fair to Jeff, he he leaves an impact. Like he's you're not gonna forget him anytime soon. So well, we that know. hair, that beard, that the feather on his ear. You know, there's, there's so much to, to ingrain him in your mind. Guy on stage, I can almost understand Jeff's animosity towards him because it's like, <laughs> who is this dude? Because he's got um, yeah. Because we're still in the middle of Friends, obviously. Uh, and oh yeah, and Dragon Sound are grooving like only they can. Look at these moves. Oh god, yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing, because John, he's doing a little head swivel, and he's got a good uh, hair flop going there. He's like, <laughs> the flop is hot. Oh, yeah. Mm. Him and Jane going at it. But at one point, like, at the beginning, though, Yoshito looks over, and he's like, is that your sister, Jane? Which, again, classic expositional dialogue <laughs> to, to go with that. Her name is Jane. She working here? Yeah. He seems genuinely shocked, doesn't he? It's, why is it shocking? Okay, but that's the thing. Well, I got the vibe from Jeff is that, like, he keeps her under lock and key. So it would be like, what the hell is she doing out anywhere? Uh, but I was more intrigued by the concept that Yoshito has presumably met her before. Mm. And like, I guess that means he's just hang around. He's hung around Jeff's house loads. Like, he goes around for barbecues and everything, yeah. Yeah, that must have probably is the thing where he's like, yeah, he's, you know. He brings over, you know, they're having a barbecue. He brings over the the ice slabs to <laughs> slice into or something. Or that'd be part of it. Is like, oh, I think probably what he do is like, I'll bring slabs of ice and that'll be good. Because it's like making a, bringing a bag of ice to a party. And then he does his little chop trick. Oh, but yeah. of course, it's with the flames. So he just ends up melting the ice. And it's like a disaster. <laughs> what are you thinking, Yoshino? <laughs> it's a good point, though, uh, bringing that up because... It does paint an interesting picture of the villains. Like, yes, they are villainous. Yes, they are, you know, dickheads. But it, it, it's quite human to think that these two are actually friends. A friend! <laughs> <laughs> friends for eternity. I think I get that. I really, I really do get more of the vibe, though, that Yoshito wants to be Jeff's friend. And <laughs> Jeff is like, he is, he is a go. He's got a real pent up, like, no. Like, everything's just very closed off with him and stuff. Um, oh, Yoshito just wants him to open up. I actually feel a little bit bad at the at the end of this minute for Yoshito because I think he's come here. Like he's he seems to be really pally with Jeff. Jeff sees this, gets very visibly upset, and like you know this has ruined his night. And so Yoshito's probably like, well, you know, we only get seeing each other every once in a while. Don't <laughs> let this bug you. Come on, like yeah. let's, I'm here to party. I'm here to. Have, I've got my party ascot on. Like, <laughs> Plus, why does it matter? This is what I don't understand. Not only is it a weird assumption to make, like, is she working here? No, she's on stage with the band. Mm. That's not working, like, as such. Like, she's clearly in the band. How could she be the singer in a band and nobody know? This is bizarre (laughs) to me. Is she having to, like, do, like, cover her singing (laughs) in the house? Like, she should be doing rehearsals. You don't get into dragon sound willy-nilly. You have to be rehearsed and good, so... Oh, yeah. It's the I don't know, every time cram. Jeff's out, she's having to, like, belt out a couple of tunes or something, mm-hmm. but... It's it's very strange. I don't know why he cares so much. I don't know why everyone's shocked. I, I know what you're saying. Like, oh, he, you know, he sort of keeps her... 
like yeah. Rapunzel or something. But I don't know. It it still it seems very peculiar to me. Mm. Oh no, I think it is. This is a, you know there are people unfortunately like that who just have very controlling personalities over whether it be their family or their like you know significant mm. other or whatever. And yeah, that's just, that's just Jeff's. That's his. That's, uh, uh, there, I say he has a flaw. That <laughs> might be it. <laughs> he's he's aggressively controlling of his sister, and I mean it's kind of up to us to sort of decipher why that might be. Like again, we were talking off mic about uh, the fantastic show C- Cobra Kai. Oh yeah, and that always that's got a great habit of like here's a villain. And you get built up and you're just like, I hate that. I hate them so much. They're so needlessly mean. <laughs> and then they'll do a little thing where they, they show you a little bit of backstory. And you're like, oh, no. Now I totally understand why Tori's Tragic like this. Childhood. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, it's like, no, no. Actually, I'm on their side now. And stuff. So they're, they're, this is one scene away from Jeff being like, you know, their mother got, you know, assaulted or something like that. Or she you know, got, a, you know, he maybe he had another little sister who got like abducted and killed or something. Well, and so he's just very, very protective. My head canon is that Jeff and Jane, he raised her, so that's why he's protective. He's like, I gotta look out for you, little sister. Yeah, he is he is the Dell boy to her, Rodney. Yep, yep. <laughs> Very weird a... reference to Americans. You won't get it, most probably. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought I would compare Miami connection to only fools and horses, but uh, <laughs> you know, if it works. <laughs> so we need uh we need a remake starring David Jason. Yeah. Uh, I mean he's still young. He's still yeah, he he's can still... do it. Yeah, he's got he's got the moves. He's a martial arts expert, right? Yeah, I mean, would love this though. Like a, Jeff, then is just like, all right, all right, yes, you know, I can get you forty-five hairdressers, uh, forty-five blow dryers for only seventy nicker. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I, I, I don't know if I want that. Uh, That's going to confuse the Americans even more. <laughs> and I think they did. They did try to translate that show into America because I know they did a pilot with John Leguizamo. Oh. And Christopher Lloyd was granddad in it. And I think it just didn't track. Like, uh. I think it was like mar- market traders. Like, I think in America that would mean like, oh, like Wall Street. It's like, no, like market traders down, like guys standing out in a little, you know, a, a <laughs> Yeah, how do we explain this to... to the listeners? Like, basically, well, this is a show, Only Fools and Horses, if you didn't hear us before. Uh, and yeah, they sell stuff at the market. Do they have markets like that in America? It's like... It's like a flea market, I guess. It's like a flea market. It's like uh, it's all sort of cheap, and and you buy sort of in bulk, and it's yeah. all, it's always of suspicious origins. Where did this come from? Mm. <laughs> there's a, there's underhand things going on, black market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so like you're so like inve- emotionally invested in these characters, like they're your heroes, but all they do is like try to flog, like counterfeit. <laughs> Or broken stuff to innocent people. <laughs> and then like every time that is like, oh yeah, I bought like sixty brand new suitcases that fell off the back of a lorry somewhere. <laughs> but it'll turn out like, oh you can't unlock them because the combination for them is just stuck inside the suitcase or something like that. <laughs> like it's... I think that could work in an American context. But these days they're better at uh, changing our stuff. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, reinterpreting it, yeah. It's it's just it's very, very cockney as well. It's an intensely not even English show, very specific to London is yeah. the thing about it. So, um, Well, even where they live, like they live in Nelson Mandela House, which is actually funny if you get the kind of context of the time <laughs> and where they live in and things. Mm, mm. But, uh, oh, but you know, maybe they, they they did translate it. It would just be like, oh, so it would be Jeff and Jane. <laughs> that's, yep. that's, the, that's the duo you'd be seeing. That, that would have made the American remake take off. Yeah. And that's my headcanon for them is I think... I think that's what it is. That's why he's so protective. It doesn't make him right to be so. But that would be his uh, his dark flashback. Like, he witnesses the parents dying as well. Mm, she mm. doesn't, but he does. Yeah, then he's like, you don't understand. You you weren't there. Yeah. Like, I went, we went down Crime Alley and our parents got <laughs> shot by a mugger. It's it's like the flip of Batman. So instead of becoming a hero, he became a villain. That's a, that's a question I don't think we've ever asked on Batman. If Bruce Wayne had siblings... Would he have become Batman? Because I guess he'd be like, "Well, I got to take care of this other. Like, I've still got family. I guess I've got to look after a little brother or sister, or an older brother or sister is looking after me. There wouldn't Ooh. be enough time to indulge in like I'm going to go off and study the minds of criminals and all this kind of stuff. Like, it would be more like, no, I guess he would, he might be closer to being 
on a normal track for a human being, maybe? Maybe. But but then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, Bruce can become Batman and the sibling can become the Joker. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're, it's also, uh, the, the answer is right here, too. If Bruce Wayne had a sibling, he'd become Jeff. Like, that's the... <laughs> We know, but we're building the mythology right here. We've it's got like, it. yeah, they got shot in a, shot in a Miami crime alley, <laughs> and that's why. Like, the, and then Jeff was like, "Never again. We're moving out of Miami. We'll never go back there ever again. <laughs> we're moving Don't... to Orlando, five minutes down the road." <laughs> Everyone knows it's better there. I actually don't have a clue. Let me know, listeners. I have no idea about America. No, uh-huh. I will say one of my uh, favorite things though in the whole movie makes his debut uh, in this minute. Oh. And it's the guy b- behind Yoshito who is like the... I've written him in my notes because he's a husky dude. And I've written him in my uh, my notes as Husker Dude. Uh, <laughs> <in the rest. laughs> Although I found out recently I've been calling that band Husker Do. Same. That for years. Apparently it's Husker Do. Oh. Yeah. I've only ever heard people say Husker Do. Yeah, I think I asked for them once via you know Spotify on my my Google device, which I won't say the name of because <laughs> she can hear me. She can hear me right now. She's but then and then, then she went like you know playing songs so- books about UFOs by Husker Du. I was like Husker, what the hell is this? Hey, Niall, I wouldn't trust a machine. <laughs> Don't be trusting them robots. Did you not watch Terminator? Yeah, no. that's like <laughs> that was how you knew that the. Uh, you know, the T-1000 was up to something. Robert Patrick couldn't say Husker Do correctly. <laughs> yeah, that's how they uncovered who it was. He was uh, in disguise. They're like, oh, my God. But, the, but yeah, Husker Dude uh, behind Yoshito, everything he's doing, because he goes on, as the film goes on, he gets some amazing stuff to do. Is I, it- I got the vibe, he was probably an, ex- an extra who stepped up. And then they kind of gave him more to do in the film because he sort of he doesn't get many lines or anything. He's just like one of the henchmen, but he leaves such a big impact on me personally that I'm like, <laughs> this is the guy. And even in this minute, he has like a little arc, just on to himself within the minute because they're all looking at the band. Jeff's up, upset. Yoshido's like, well, what, what's that? Oh, is that your sister and stuff? That guy's behind them. He looks at the band. And he's like, not as said like, yeah. Yeah, and he does a little fist pump, like he's in the dragon sound. He, he fist pumps a few times. You see it when it's just focused on Yoshito. You can yeah. see, like, to just beside his head in the background, he's fist pumping as well there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, though, as it goes on, and he notices that Jeff and Yoshito are having this conversation about Jeff being upset, he flips. He's so loyal to the gang without even knowing why they don't like dragon sound now. You can see him kind of going like, oh, yeah. Like, he, like he turns against them, and he has a sort of, like... He puts up his, his hand to his mouth like he's a little bit aghast about the situation going on. And he has like, yeah, he's kind of figuring out like, oh, oh no, we've got beef with these guys. Oh no, what are we going to do? Oh, bless him. Yeah. He's, cute. he's yeah. He looks a bit like, um, what's his face who plays, uh, he plays uh, Bullock. Oh, Eckhart, Eckhart, Eckhart. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he looks like him. Yeah, I, I, you reminded me a little bit of uh, Taggart in Beverly Hills Cop. Yes. You know, it's a bit surprising there. This is Taggart got transferred in 87 to uh, to Orlando. This is, he's in deep, deep cover. With, and that's why he's so attuned to what's happening with the gang. He's like, oh, yeah, this song is kind of rocking. Notices they're upset. He's like, oh, no, <laughs> got to stick with the program. Oh, no, yeah, oh, boo, boo, dragons, <laughs> boo, boo, boo. It blew my mind the other day finding out there's a new Beverly Hills Cop on the way. Mm, I had mm. no idea. I was just like, wait, I got a, a notification on my phone. Beverly Hills Cop starts filming. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've seen pictures of Taggart in it as well. Him oh. and George Reynolds are back. Although they're always, it feels like the last 30 years have been a continual they're, they're making a Beverly Hills Cop for. <laughs> so I'm always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now yeah, they I'm, are. Yeah, now it's actively happening. It's like, uh, again, like yesterday they had like, oh, well, there's a trailer now for Indiana Jones 5. And like, oh, so it's actually, that's the thing. You've actually made it then. It's done. Like, you're actually going to bring that out. Are you I, sure? Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> I saw a, uh, a picture where he met up with, uh, what the, you know, the actor who's short round. Mm, mm. And uh, it got me thinking, like, is short round in the movie? Everyone complained short round wasn't in the last one. Yeah. I think he, he was there at the, it was because for D23. And the announcement was that he, because he was recently in Everything Everywhere all at once, and yeah. kind of got like, oh, yeah, whatever happened to Short Round? Uh, and I think he, they announced that he's going to be in Loki season two. Yeah. But 
like I'm sure he is in Loki season two. I'm sure though him and Harrison Ford hanging out, it probably is a little bit like, well, he's also in something mm-hmm. else that's coming out pretty soon as well. So. That's what I'm hoping for. Everybody yeah. said it, but at least why wasn't he at the wedding at the end of the last one? It's because he knew. He knew it was all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel for you though, John, because I'm not to get too far off topic, but um, from what I know of uh, you know the, the behind the scenes stuff, apparently Phoebe Waller Bridge is a massive presence in the movie, mm. and I know that you despise her. Well, I don't <laughs> so. despise her. I just find her. I find her a bit annoying. She's so posh. She is very posh. Yeah, uh, yeah people like that. I just want to punch them in the face. <laughs> I do believe she is from landed gentry. I think she's like her, her family or from money. And that stuff. doesn't like surprise she's... me one bit. Although she is taking Fleabag's a great show. She's great in it. It feels very raw and honest to someone who's been like... But then in that, she comes from a wealthy family, but she's sort of like half-rejecting it kind of and stuff. And, yeah, but at, le- at least she's written that into the character. Then that- That's yeah. like she's not trying to pretend she's something she's not. You know? <laughs> Although I think everything I've seen her at, like everything I've seen her in... I think I've only, the only other things I've seen her in have been solo. And I wasn't a great fan of that character. And so it is a bit like, well, she's great as Fleabag. But I don't know, like, her with mm. Indiana Jones, if it's the same kind of, like, oh, she's just going to be, like, was it L3, you call that character? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't think the character's going to be like that. I would assume the character's maybe a bit uh, a bit bookish, and uh, he drags her out of the library and turns her into a, uh, an action hero. <laughs> yeah. Although they might, they might flip your expectations, John. It could be the maybe. other G G's the adventurer gets him out of the library or something. It's possible. He's an old man now. <laughs> I'll say too, like every because t- they're showing you the outfit as well, the Indiana Jones outfit. It was very noticeable to me in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that when Harrison Ford's an old man, his trousers just look like old man trousers. They do, don't they? They look <laughs> awful. Oh, it's probably the same trousers he's wearing in the first three, but they're like you put them on an old on an old man, they just look like old man trousers. They now. look like some old dude with slacks. Yeah, yeah. It's like it goes the the belts at his nipples or something. <laughs> like it's just. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you can you can you can put a fedora and a leather jacket over that, but you can't hide the old man about it, man. Just... <laughs> He's got old man stink. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Harrison. You have an enchanting musk. <laughs> uh, uh, Miami connection. <laughs> Miami connection. Jeff has a lovely musk, I'm sure. Oh, you know he he has some form of smell about him. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's going to be more pleasant than you reckon, though, because you know he looks a bit rough and tough, but he looks after that beard. There's some mm. oils going into that beard. Definitely, definitely some beard oil going on. I would imagine him to be a brute man. Yes, yeah. He could so be a brute, and maybe his deodorant is uh, right guard, or um, <laughs> something basic like that, or Old Spice. Yeah, and then Husker dude behind him, he, he, he he's the one stinking up the room. I imagine yeah, he's yeah. got that vibe about him, where you got Joe Taggart in disguise, doesn't want to let on, it's like, all right, so these guys don't bathe, I guess. <laughs> but I did note, too, because he has a... Chinese characters or Japanese characters on his T-shirt. As yes. it's a it's a T-shirt with a ninja on it. <laughs> it took me about six viewings of this minute to notice the ninja. <laughs> but uh, I went to uh, who is now becoming quick my uh, my Asian language translator, uh, Jack Stovold, because mm-hmm. like, he answered in previous minutes, and I was like, "What does this mean?" It was weird too, because he answered me instantaneously when I assumed it would be about three in the morning <laughs> where he is. He's always but- waiting for your call. He was, he was probably like, afterwards, he's like, no problem at all. I'm, I, I enjoy getting sent these, so please do send more. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but apparently it just means ninja. <laughs> uh, which struck me as a real, like, it's kind of this gang's forte, is that they're biker ninjas who are loud assholes, completely defying the point of ninjas. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose that makes sense then, that he's going to flaunt it on a t-shirt. Yeah, of course, it's like friggin', um we might have mentioned it in previous minutes, but like in Jackie Brown, like Michael Keaton's character, this you know FBI agent, just goes around in a tight T-shirt with FBI emblazoned on it, no matter where he is. Yeah, female body inspector. Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Uh, or just like yeah, it just has that like you know he's like as if they're trying to rebrand ninjas. It's like <laughs> enough of the shadows. We're we're coming out. We're 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 here. We're clear. We don't want any more shadows. They're taking ninjas to strange new places. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to shoot it from different angles. <laughs> uh, the- Jeff, though, comes out. You've you've quoted it already with something that it, it's possibly the most unbelievably bad line delivery in history. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. 
it's the it's the real beginning of how bad the, the line deliveries in this movie can be because so far actually like 11 minutes in there's been no real like oh yeah that's a dud because the only person who's really spoken has been Yoshido yeah and, and he's, he's actually pretty he's pretty good <laughs> considering the actors in the movie he's like oh he's he's one of the better ones yeah no it's it's actually yeah a good point and you know considering his first language I assume is in English that you you know if he, if there is any slight weirdness you're like well it's okay like he's mm-hmm. doing great with the English I can understand everything he's saying but Jeff oh boy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do we, you can how say do we it's a bad this? line delivery or it's amazing because he is so flabbergasted <laughs> that he can he can barely form the words. It's not that he messed up the line and then had to repeat it in a very flat fashion, assuming they would do another take or something. <laughs> they didn't have the money for that anyway. No, so, he, yeah, when he's, he's looking aghast at his sister, he's like, I'm going to give it a shot. <clears throat> She's not supposed to be here. I, I don't... I don't know what she's doing here. <laughs> I think it's even more flat than that. <laughs> I don't know. It was one of those things that are like, oh, we should do that take again. But that extra in the background reacting to everything was so good. We can't ask him <laughs> to do that again. So this is the one for Roland. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same if you got him to do it a second time. It'd be fake. Performative. Yeah, because like it's, it's like trying to re-record a podcast. We're like, well, dude. You can, I mean, you can fake the the revelations and stuff again, but <laughs> no, we've, had we've to done do this it. many times. That's the thing. Like people, people, the people don't know, but like there have been episodes of of that in it that are like it sounds as if we just recorded that like off the cuff. But it's like no, it was actually for whatever reason we had to do it again. Yeah, and it's all like, oh, did you know that in minute seventy five this happened? What? No <laughs> way. And sometimes we talk about things off mic, and then it's like, well, we'll reveal it on air as well and pretend we didn't talk about it. <laughs> Trade secrets, y'all. I can't believe yeah. I said y'all. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, so, yeah, terrible, terrible. <laughs> Awful. And it takes me back yet again. I don't understand why he's so confused. Like, I, I don't know what my sister is doing ever. I, she mm. could be doing anything right now. She could be singing on stage with a ninja band. It looks like, too, she's not... Like, she'd probably been there a while. She had to go out and do her hair and makeup and stuff. And, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I will say also to address your earlier point, John, about the, like, oh, is she working here? I guess if they've been announced as the house band. Maybe. You could classify that as working there because it's like, well, this is their, they have to play there, like, I guess every weekend. or I suppose technically, right? But I'll tell you now, no band I know who is like a house band for somewhere would ever say that they would never like there's a house band uh uh the caledonia the pub you know in town Mm. i guarantee if you ask them they they wouldn't say they worked at the caledonia no no Mm. they say i do gigs at the caledonia yeah or like yeah but we wouldn't cut something like well i do gigs a whole bunch of places i'm sure dragon sound can go elsewhere if they want to as well well they they, later on in the movie they're going to plan a tour no of course (laughs) a great tour I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Then we think now, what, 35 years later, they might have finally raised the money to do it as well. <laughs> they should have done that actually to promote the uh, the vinyl release of the soundtrack. Yeah. Gone all to the places they suggest later on. Maybe we should do a world tour to promote the podcast. <laughs> We're going to go to Ireland. Uh, mm-hmm. Where else do they say? Korea? Yeah. Well, they're going to Pakistan. I know that's not where you're from, but that's you know where you spent a good chunk of your childhood. So. Yeah, yeah. And Cyprus, we can go mm. to these places. Gloucestershire? <laughs> uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> we can leave that one. You gotta move a lot of coke in Gloucestershire, John. <laughs> I think everyone in Gloucester's on coke. <laughs> that's why you. That's why you left. It's the only way to get through the day. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so I think if you, just, you get the vibe though, because you should. It was like for a guy who seems so angry himself, he is in full. Again, he's got the party ascot on. I'm a bit confused about his specs because I can't tell whether they're sunglasses or just really crap. Like over here, you call them NHS specs. <laughs> whether just like yes, yeah, it's just back in the 70s and 80s, that's what glasses look like. <laughs> they're just sort of a bit a bit off color and crap looking. And now I know they're back. Like yeah, that, that yeah. I've seen people like hipstery kind of people Hipsters wearing them. Yep. Yeah. And things, because I, I guess all things that people might look at me and go like, you're a bit hipstery. 
But I'd be like, never. I can never wear those glasses. They look mm-hmm. terrible. <laughs> You've got to have the right vibe to pull them off. Like, if I wore them, I wouldn't look right, you know. Um, yeah. But Yoshito, it goes with his look. You know, it goes with all the clothes he's got on. Because even though this is the 80s, he's got a kind of hybrid of a 70s and 80s thing going on, you know, with the mm. little scarf and everything. Yeah, I mean, he's got, he's, he's got a good... He's got a good look, Yoshito. He's stylish, he's got, isn't he? Mm. He's got my dad's haircut from the 70s as well. I <laughs> think that's the exact... The exact hair my dad has in every photo I've ever seen of him. That's a good head of hair. Yeah, he does. Like, tragically, he's no longer there. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a family thing. I don't have. I don't have any anything there either. But same. My dad's. Yeah. My dad's got more hair than me, but it's still like, oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, but um, but not yeah, those glasses. Like one of the, my more recent things where i was like oh maybe i should try to get more into snl is that they've got that girl oh, i thought you were gonna say snm okay <laughs> oh, well, yeah, i'm already deep deep in there John. i can't, can't back out now no, no shaming no shaming on this uh, show but they got that woman uh sarah squirm i think she goes by as one of these people's like that sounds like a <laughs> an snm porn star but okay <laughs> go on. but yeah it's like it's on saturday night live now i know that they've got, they've got a, a new young new young talent but she seems to do like really grotesque like body horror based oh, comedy her. yeah yeah but she and i've seen like I, the sketches i've seen from saturday night live again like uh, every i'm sorry to, uh, to offend anyone who's really into the show but every sketch nearly every sketch i've seen on saturday night live bar maybe three or four have been terrible yeah yeah sorry dave palace especially i know you're listening yeah but uh but i'm intrigued by her and like, i keep saying like oh she's she's doing the edinburgh fringe and like i'm homesick like, maybe she'll come to liverpool because i kind of the in- the intrigue behind her is that like you know you see on the set behind her when she's doing the stand up is like like her mouth pried open and blood all over her teeth and stuff <laughs> and apparently the whole like oh, the whole act is like she's kind of dressed a bit like a clown and it's all graphic body horror based humor it's like I'm very intrigued by this because she's like an attractive young woman but deals with like talking about like tumor hair and stuff like that's the, the, the jokes all about stuff like that. But she she has those Yoshido glasses on all the time, and the things as well as when you look at it and you're like, do you need those glasses or is this a hipster thing? Where you're like, you know, you buy specs that you actually need. It's like you gotta have to wear them all day every day. You have to pick ones that you that work all the time. Yeah, like sometimes good... I've been tempted to go for like different colors and stuff. But it's like I know some days you're just not gonna be feeling it. So yeah, you know, I kind of get a bit of doubt. Is like, is this is this part of the shtick? These glasses or I, the deal? I, glasses like that are normally glasses. They're not sunglasses. They're, they're actual, you know, to see. And it's just like a cool tint. You know, like John Lennon used to have cool tints mm. on his glasses and things. But at the same time, when he's in ninja mode, he's not wearing them. Yeah. So unless he's got contacts, but how popular were they then? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing with, like, although... You know, Yoshido, he moves a lot of coke in Orlando. He could probably afford <laughs> contacts. But. Maybe, maybe. And again, listeners, if you know, were contact lenses popular at this uh, period of the 80s? I, off the top of my head, I would assume not. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't born till 86. Yeah, yeah. That's something I was talking about the other day, too, where... Oh, no, it was Rocky, the first Rocky film. Mm. I was talking to Scott Corelli. Like, he's doing his show, Franchiseography, is now going through the Rocky movies. Hey. And um, I was very curious at the end because, like, yeah, they have the bit where Adrian, she's wearing gla- glasses and she, you know, was when she's supposed to be, like, very introverted and, mm. you know, mousy and stuff. And it's kind of rocky. You can see past all that. And he takes off the glasses at one point. And she shows up at the end. She's not got the glasses on anymore. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, she's from a very, very poor family. That's kind of half the point. Like, American healthcare isn't notoriously is not great <laughs> does she she must i can't imagine you know adrian in 1976 even having the money to go out and get contacts no. that would be like specific to her her you know, prescription and stuff so i'm just like is adrian just going around with like a blinding headache barely seeing anything it's, the whole time? What, it's what her man wants <laughs> yeah she's like, i think it's what rocky wants i gotta you know I'll support him while he, you know, the next four movies after this, he nearly kills himself over and over maybe, again. Maybe, maybe, you know, doing what he wants. Maybe that's her kink. <laughs> like, even I, if I, just it, a, I just love men who tell me what to do and then try to self-destruct <laughs> over and over. Sadly, I think uh, 
too many people, especially women, are, are attracted to that. <laughs> yeah, that could be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately. Maybe that's what Jane sees in, uh, in John up there, too. We don't know his... Uh, well, I guess we will we'll grow to know his details as, as, as the film continues. Yeah, so. yeah. But at the... But Yoshito calls the boys away, doesn't he? And they, they head across the club. And mm. as they do that, we see the most stylish woman ever bopping around. <laughs> like, this is some Madonna shit. Have you seen this I woman? I actually literally wrote down young Madonna. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> she's got she just full-blown has the Madonna look going on there. And she's pulling it off. Mm. Mm. I'm into Let's it. Let's get those hair sunglasses. That's the way I think that all sunglasses should. Like, I'm, I'm a a man who's into expensive sunglasses. Mm. I think they should all look like those cheap white or like pink frame, plastic frame. Oh, 80s they always ones. look cooler, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, cool. that's a sunglasses. Like, yeah, they, they, they'll, I'll happily have people wearing those. But when people come out like, yeah, these you know sun, sunglasses that cost five hundred you know quid or whatever. Like, why are you? What are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> you go by, you buy those things. They're like three quid. They go and they look great. They look absolutely <laughs> perfect. So, well, I mean, if you want to actually protect your eyes, I don't think they could. <laughs> well, yeah, but not in this. But maybe Dragon Sound are known for their, um, you know, epilepsy-inducing uh, <laughs> light show or something <laughs> midway through. Because yeah, in fact, she's wearing sunglasses, and Yoshito is also potentially wearing sunglasses. It could be like, oh, we know you don't go into this place without <laughs> some kind of protection going on. They've got they have crazy projections like the Velvet Underground used to do. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I've heard Dragon Sound be described as the Velvet Underground of the eighties. <laughs> it goes like coming on next is you know, shiny, shiny, <laughs> shiny boots of lead. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Right. We should get Ash, uh, the person who has done our theme song. Thanks, Ash. We should ask him. Can you cover? Can you cover Venus in Furs in the style of Dragon Sound? <laughs> and I know exactly what he would say to that, John. Yes. He probably <laughs> would. He, he does anything you ask him. Uh, and I feel bad because you think, I'm piling too much on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but also, when it's a project like covering Venus in Furs <laughs> as Dragon Sound, who could. He, we, I think he would be more offended if we, if we didn't tell him about this yeah, idea. But. Yeah. And he could do it in the chipmunk voice that he does our theme song in, or he could do it in his natural voice, which is quite deep. He could be like, shine it, shine it. <laughs> I uh, love it. But, but even before, like, uh, as Yoshido ushers everybody off, like, I guess because he is, you know, ma- a master of Taekwondo in himself, uh, I notice as the, as the gang are all walking away, Mark is kind of, you know, YK King, Kim himself. He's kind of looking at them like he knows something's up. Like, he was kind of like, oh, these guys are standing at this corner of the stage glaring at my buddy John and his new girlfriend, Jane. And as they're walking away, he's kind of eyeing them up, too. Like, okay, that's that's a bit weird. That, uh, you know, this a literal G.I. Joe doll come to life. Has been... <laughs> you've always got to be keeping an eye on the crowd. You know, you've got to make sure there's nothing untowards going on. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, God knows he's not playing his instrument up there. He has to be doing something. <laughs> <laughs> well, how dare you? How dare you, Niall? Oh, He's a is, master. There is very, very good proof later in this minute that that guitar has never been held by that man before. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. He's trying his best. He's really trying, and he's failing miserably. <laughs> it's like it's like when a ten year old gets like one of those inflatable guitars. Yeah, I think, oh, it's, it's, it's 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 the uh, twenty six seconds in. Immediately after Madonna Lady, yep. we get like iconic shot. Of Dragon Sound. And yeah, it, it looks like Mark is... He's holding that guitar as if he was a space alien. <laughs> who was just... Someone just described to them the way you're supposed to hold and play a guitar. Because <laughs> he's going... He's like... The way he tilts it way upwards at the most awkward angle that no one would ever... And he's just the hands just flailing around. It's like, at least put him at the keyboards or something. Because then you can... All you have to do is press the keys. You can kind of... Anyone can make that look convincing at least. No, he's, he's this band Sid Vicious... <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, they haven't even got the amp on <laughs> it's, it's like slashing up his chest and stuff with a katana <laughs> later on the movie takes a dark turn when he gets into drugs that's why everyone else has got the shirts off and he doesn't because it's just covered in scars <laughs> from previous shows <laughs> sliced up written words into him yeah he's got dragon he's got into his chest <laughs> or pan oh, <laughs> or pan that's why they made, you know you misspelled that and then he has to keep saying no it's deliberate and that's why he keeps saying Orpan throughout the thing. It's no, it's to a try thing. to convince the people around him. No, it is pronounced that way. Like it's a regional dialect. 
<laughs> well, he is from Utica, after all. <laughs> Love it. Oh. But oh yeah, fantastic shot though. Like uh, if you had to encapsulate Dragon Sound in a shot, I think I would go for the that twenty six to twenty eight seconds. Yeah. Of uh, him just rocking out, <laughs> but like at a abnormal angle that no <laughs> human being would try to air guitar in, and then you know uh, Joe up on his little pedestal there. And he's the thing is he's not doing a good job of miming either. <laughs> like, oh, he's doing okay. At least at least you can tell the guy knows what an instrument is. I mean, his his vocal miming is not bad, but it, I know the way he's strumming doesn't look to me like that ain't that that, that strum ain't right. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's me because maybe I'm just not like you know other people with a keener ear and eye for music. They might be like, no, that's the way that would sound. Like well, it's, to be you know, to be fair as well. Uh, you know, not to knock him, but I don't think he's had a lot of experience of doing this kind of thing. Um, and miming doing stuff is very different to actually doing it. Mm, mm. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's like we were doing a music video the other week and I had to mime a whole bunch of things. Uh, it was just, it was horrible. Uh, mm. So maybe they, this is his first experience of pretending to play <clears throat> and it never has the same oomph. Mm. You, you never yeah. get it right. The baby, did you did you consult our mime expert, uh, Sean German, from Five Minutes of Mime? Why didn't I? Oh, mm. Jesus. Oh. He'd be look at that video now and he'd be like, John, what were you thinking? You should have come <laughs> to me. What were you doing? <laughs> it's like we're calling up Pete Bentham. He's just like, delete that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're going to go reshoot it uh, on my dime, uh, but I'm going to I'm gonna whip this dinner lady into shape. Let me tell you. <laughs> Hey, uh, you know, hope hopefully no reshoots, but coming coming soon, listeners. <laughs> it might be out by the time you listen to this. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, because it's been like yeah, it's like eleven weeks from now. <laughs> like it's like a three months time. So. Yeah, and I think the video uh, as of recording is out in about three weeks. So there you go. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, but um, well, that'd be like oh, that was the music video that destroyed Pete Bentham <laughs> and the Dinner Lady. <laughs> no, it's what propelled us to superstardom, now. It's what got us Glastonbury <laughs> Pyramid Stage. Oh, but um, but yeah, so I think we find out then that um, many people are still rocking out, enjoying the the dulcet tones of Dragon Sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the Jeff and gang are just going to go chill on a sofa in the back there, which is nice that they had the sofa free and open. Because uh, you know, I've been I've been to nightclubs and like you know you have to you know freaking choke people out to try to get a chair half the time. Yeah, so. yeah, especially when it's got sofas. Mm. Like I'm mm. trying to think that a lot of places don't really have them now. If it's like a, a club like this, do they? I suppose um, I'm racking my brain about venues in town that would have sofas in this sort of environment. Uh, there's not many places. Unless it be like I, I, I discovered recently, though. Much like anyone who gets older, my mind's still in the past. Mm. So I'd recommend places in Liverpool that have been shut for like ten years. <laughs> So I'm like, oh yeah, why don't you go to like Karova or something? <laughs> like Karova has existed since 2012, man. <laughs> like it's... Oh well, one that one that definitely has sofas, and is from the past, but did come back. Zanzibar. Ah, Zanzibar yeah. has got sofas at the side. Mm-hmm. Mm. In fact, this looks a bit like the Zanzibar. No, oh. well, I, I, I did. Uh, I looked into um, Park Avenue, the club they're in. The dully named nightclub <laughs> discovered that apparently there was uh, a Park Avenue club in Orlando, Florida. Um, yeah, but, but there's I, no I, way I, they shot it there. Well, that's I'm kind of curious because I th- the verification I got of it was from that website that publishes band set lists. You know, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know the one. Yeah, because I, I go on there sometimes where I'm like, you know, I know some people will be like, it's sacrilege because you like, you should be just happy to be surprised at what a band plays. But when I'm going to see someone, I'm like, what are they playing? <laughs> I just uh-huh. want to know how many songs I'm going to know and stuff. And so I'll go in this little thing and see, like, where are on the tour? What did they play the night before? And see what the set list, set list was. But I think you can click on the venue yeah. and they'll tell you every band that played there. And the last band that seemed to play in the Park Avenue Club, uh, where it's, annoyingly, it's uh, it was, at least, um, 4315... North Orange Blossom Trail, which is weird because there is a street called Park Avenue in Orlando, <laughs> and apparently this club was not located there, which is potentially why it shut down because everybody just got confused. Oh, uh, Park Avenue no, doesn't look like Park Avenue on film. <laughs> you got to paint a cow and then just <laughs> let people inside that. 
Uh, no, no, it's, it, it seems like it shut down in 1983, the last gig, which is weird that they even uploaded that to this website, but they're like, no, the last gig of it that they could track was from 1983, but they had some pretty big acts play there. Um, they had, uh, let's see, K- Kid Creole, uh, the oh. Ramones played there, R.E.M. played there in 82, uh, the Stray Cats, of course, Brian, Brian Setzer's Stray Cats. Uh, and the B fifty twos played um, played the Park Avenue Club, uh, and you know sadly before it tragically died. Um, but they have, I would love the idea though that Dragon Sound is potentially opening for the B fifty twos. Maybe that's who <laughs> that's who Jeff's here to see. No, the B fifty twos are opening for Dragon Sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, oh, they're they're about to. Uh, speaking of things ending, they're going on their final ever tour. I thought they broke up already. <laughs> no, no, no. I keep, I keep having a vague memory of like five years ago. The B fifty two saying, "Yeah, we're done." Like they might be, like they might be pulling a Rolling Stones, where it's like, "It's over." Now we're doing another tour. No, this is definitely it. They're, they're, they're advertising it and calling it, yeah, like the final tour ever. Like we, we've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Again, though, like the Rolling Stones. So. But yeah, they must be getting on now, though. Like the B fifty twos, they must be like well in their sixties and seventies at this yeah, point. So still all looking good. Yeah, yeah. I just found it weird too that this would be too off topic, but like, um, you know, when Julie Cruz died recently, it was you know ethereal, beautiful singer Julie Cruz who did you know the, some of the songs for Twin Peaks. Yeah, and she has a very ghostly kind of way. Of singing. You know, it's very soft voice. And then finding out, like, oh, she used to fill in in the B fifty twos. Oh, not even, not even just fill in. Like, she, she was a full member for a while as well. Yeah, yeah. But one of them got, one of the girls got pregnant, mm. and it's just weird because Julie, the B fifty twos is just, <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's big. It's a brassy sound. I was like, oh, Julie Cruz is doing that with them. <laughs> but and you see the footage, is like, eh, she's, she, she could do it. She, you know, it was only by special request that she was doing all the kind of ghostly ethereal stuff. Uh, not long before she died, she said her favorite thing in her entire life was being in the B-52s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was her number one, like, proud moment. Fair. It looks like it's, they have a great time. I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked that, one, that they broke up previously at some point, and, two, that they would want to stop touring, because it seems like they have a great time out yeah, there. But... Maybe maybe it's just, like, a, an age and a health thing. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to speculate <laughs> on someone's health. <laughs> I just really like, yeah. I'm I'm enjoying the idea that Yoshido's come all the way like down from <laughs> Miami because he's like, oh man, the B-52s are playing tonight. <laughs> I really love that rock lobster. Yeah, he's just sitting there like, <laughs> give me back my man. <laughs> the planet Claire, play it. <laughs> he's um, up there with the Madonna girl, <laughs> both like yeah. swapping sunglasses, bopping their heads and stuff. Hell yes. Now I want um, a cover of Dragon Sound in the style of B-52s. <laughs> Friends forever! <laughs> There's even like a demo afterwards been like, oh, thank you to our support, Dragon Sound. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh. Yeah, that could be though, then they were, now they're actually uh, supporting R.E.M. and the Yoshido. <laughs> and then no, Jeff no. are just really into you know, the kind of miserable soundings of R.E.M. Uh, no, it's, that's not as funny. It's got to be B-52s, man. It's B-52s. Unless they were like secret Hepcats and they're like they were there to see the stray cats, oh. and then as soon as they come on stage, they quiff their hair up and stuff. But uh, <laughs> I doubt that. I'm, I'm choosing to believe it's, it's the B-52s that Dragon Sound are supporting here. Against the ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Against the ninja. <laughs> Against the ninja. <laughs> Again, Ash, uh, <laughs> while you're at it, uh, if you could. The tough guys. <laughs> that one would work. Up, you know, in the Point Break Minute, uh, people don't know Point Break Minute. Uh, it was a sister, well, a sister show to Batman. But it was a show with a similar premise where they broke down uh, Point Break, the film, minute by minute. And it was hosted by Murren and Jessa. And their theme tune used to be basically a B-52 style kind of thing. Or was Murray going, hey, everybody, why don't you come on down? <laughs> and then at the end, Jessa would go, Pah! like a real belting out, B, very accurate B-52s styling yeah. thing. And then a couple episodes in, Jess was like, I've never heard of the B-52s. I don't know anything about them. What? I was, like, I was, I was baffled because one, how? And two, it was like, that impression you were doing was so spot on, though. <laughs> like, that was near enough exactly what the B-52s sound like. Maybe so. Murren's controlling and said, do what I tell you. Yeah. He's a yeah. Jeff. Well, actually, speaking of that, of relationships and and this situation, 
you know, uh, Jeff, he's going to wait. He's going to confront her. How mm-hmm. dare she have fun? Uh, but then she kisses John on the stage, mm. and that's like a big uh-oh moment. He's not happy. Yeah, they, they slow down the footage to, uh, oh, yeah. to, to, in case we missed it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And then I was, I was thinking, watching this, and, you know, Jeff, he's not happy. Mm. Oh, how dare someone kiss my sister? But I thought, you know, his fascination with all of this works even better if they're not siblings and it's someone he's into. Maybe they're mm. exes. She's left him. Like, oh, you're too much of a wild card. You're too dangerous. You know, and this mm. is the new guy she's hooked up with. Yeah, yeah. That almost makes more sense because it's kind of like, well, I can understand the level of jealousy there. Mm. But it's so weird that it's a sister. <laughs> yeah, like, it's... Yeah. Again, it's, unless it's just like yeah, the other parents and, and 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 a previous sibling are dead, and it's like I'm just so goddamn protective. I don't want anything to happen to her. I I want to redo. Let's remake this movie. They've got to be exes. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah well, well, again, that was much like um, our recent. I guess a, a little there by now, but when actually when we were talking with Murren and Jessica from Point Break Minute about Vertical Limit, yeah. The Chris O'Donnell film on our Batman and hiatus, there was this thing of like, oh yeah, Chris O'Donnell and uh, who was it? The uh, Robin Tooney were supposed to be brother and sister, and everybody on the podcast was a bit like, it seems like they should have been like exes or uh-huh. something because they seem way way too close for brother and sister. They seem like very intimate and stuff. But again, some people were like, well, that's what you'd be like with your sister, but. Uh, I'd, I'd rather people uncomfortable. weren't like that, but live your life, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do note, though, uh, it's got a pause here on second 41. I'm just enjoying seeing it. Yoshido is mid sitting down in his blue jeans. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's hip. He's hip. Uh, he's still got his fingerless gloves on and everything. He's got Ooh, the, yeah. the, the scarf, the jacket, the jeans, the fingerless gloves, the, the aviator specs. Pulling it he's, all off. He is. He's killing it. But Jeff is there. He's got his like, hand balled into a fist kind of against his head. <laughs> Like he's just like he's really like I can't I can't believe this is happening that she's out here with a guy on a stage. He's furious. How dare she kiss a man? <laughs> I mean, she's only nineteen or twenty years old. Yeah, yeah, only twenty. Yeah. yeah, it's not even like a disgusting sloppy kiss. It's a nice little peck. It's like oh yeah. Oh, it's very respectful. Yeah, yeah. it's barely on the lips. Yeah, it's kind of like to the side of his mouth. Kind of like it's real. If you wanted to deny it, you could. Kind of thing. <laughs> this is the kind of kiss, you know. This is the kind of kiss I would give someone in public. It's like well, we're in public. We're on stage. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to be going just like tongues. You know? Yeah. But let's go. Let's go to the, uh, the the instant replay to see who who instigates the kiss. Can we indicate oh. who it is? Let's analyze. Oh, I think I think it is him. He he seems to have the the lips perched before she does. Let's see. So. Let's go frame by frame. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I think you might be right. Let's yeah, take it back, definitely. Back and to the left. <laughs> you dirty dog. Yeah. So maybe now I'm starting to sigh. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, the, Jeff. He's so eagle-eyed. He's like, the, yeah, the, he he instigated. He, he was definitely. I can see him licking his lips before he started to that dirty gut. <laughs> but that, then it kind of turns into like a Seinfeld conversation. He'd be like, Yoshito, did he purse? I think he pursed. <laughs> no, I, I think I saw the purse. <laughs> Yoshido would make a great George, to be fair. <laughs> he's got the glasses. He's kind of... He lose a bit of that hair. He's, 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 he's halfway there already. Oh, now now we need a Seinfeld deep faked with these guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jerry, these goddamn ninjas, they're out there ruining all the... <laughs> Stealing our sisters. Yeah. <laughs> as well as your life. Yeah. <laughs> Let's imagine like a Newman being part of Dragon Sound or something. <laughs> Hello, Newman. Hello, Jeff. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The crossover we didn't know we needed, but now our Facebook group should just be crossover memes of <laughs> this film and Seinfeld. Well, um, but yeah, so it, it, it really they're they're emphasizing this too. Like post kiss, it just cuts back to Jeff. Clouded in shadow, <laughs> sitting glaring and just like shaking his head with disgust. Yeah, no, shaking his head like it's the worst <laughs> thing he's ever witnessed. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man, chill out. Everyone's having a good time. Even Yoshito's looking yeah. at him like, I think we're meant to believe it's it, it's sort of like he's on his side, he's shocked as well. But I'm getting the impression that it's more like, dude, calm down. <laughs> like, yeah. it's okay. I think it genuinely is, but like I came down here to have fun. Like <laughs> I'm here to see the B52s try to get an album signed. You know, 
I've already bought the t-shirt. I'm going to you know, rip off a jacket midway through and show the show support for the man. <laughs> He's got a cosmic thing with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he takes out a beehive wig midway through. And oh, my God. Off. The only way to improve his look is with a beehive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, but, um. But yeah, it's like, oh, God, he's going to be some of his moods. He's going to be like this all night now. <laughs> just... Yeah. Even those funky moves of old YK at the end aren't uh, changing their mood. No, no. You think, uh, who, like, what else could win your heart over than the, <laughs> the YK Kim's awkward, <laughs> jerky, mime attempts? <laughs> it reminds me of, like, if my mum tried to be cool. <laughs> That's kind of the vibe. Yeah. I do feel like YK Kim was probably born like somebody's mom trying to be cool. <laughs> oh, bless him. That's what I love about him, though. He's such a little nerdy dog, but he could kick the shit out of you. Well, that's the weird thing. He's a guy who has such good control over his body. Do we see some of the things he does later are incredible. How he's not able to mind playing a guitar is mind-boggling. It's a totally like, different it's... skill, though. <laughs> But uh, oh, well, to be fair, though, Jane, we do see she does do um, what we talked about previously. It's a full Bob, what she does. Yeah. A Bob, Bob the Goon in 89, Batman 89, on top of that cake with the Joker, kind of jerking his arms in a kind of cheer <laughs> fashion. And it just looks insanely awkward. And it's like, that's it. That's the Bob right there. It is. Holy crap. You did it two years before him, but you, can, you know the the name of the Bob's too good. You can't call it the Jane because it's, it's it's not as catchy. I don't think. But the Jane, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm not on board with this. No, nah, no. Nah. But uh, only other notes I got is that the, one of the gang members reminded me a bit of uh, Vasquez from Aliens. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. I mean, it, it, I'm pretty sure it is a man in this case. But you know, as as the classic scene in Aliens goes, of like, hey Vasquez, you know, I don't want to mistake you for a man. No, you best comeback of all time. Love it. No. No. Oh yeah, yeah, great char- great great character. Although I'm pretty sure, like, because it's just played by a white woman, <laughs> so I think it's kind of like a. Oh, I think it's it's kind of racist, Vasquez nowadays. Well, it's but... one of those things where uh, the character's Mexican, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, Mexican people I've spoken to online. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I can't speak for everyone. I'm not Mexican either. So, you know, but the people I've spoken to online all seem to be fine with it because they were like, okay, well, it was an era where Hollywood was quite racist. So we, they, mm. they, if she's not doing it, there's just going to be no Mexican character. Yeah. And also I think because yeah. they, they felt she was quite respectful. She wasn't like doing any anything to make fun you know mm. so yeah. it's a bit like uh it reminded me a bit of that master of none you know where he's yeah he, he thinks the guy from short circuit they're like oh it's my favorite indian actor that's what they were like they're like oh no we love her we love her um so mm. hopefully that is the general consensus i don't know but she, she was an early crush of mine <laughs> yeah i thought I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure they darkened her skin though i think that's that was, that's the one that's a bit like oh, well, maybe no. yeah and it's because jeanette goldstein so it's like i know she's i'm not too sure if there is a big jewish population in Mexico. I don't imagine so. I yeah, know. but that's a very Jewish name as well, <laughs> Jenna Goldstein. So. It's one of those things I think that uh, it's technically wrong, but it, it did good. So, mm. like, don't do it again now. We've moved on, but don't dismiss it either. Like, okay, yeah. you know, it was a stepping stone, maybe, maybe. Mm. But again, I can't let us know, listeners, if you've got an opinion on that, if you're Mexican, especially. Yeah. I don't know. It's, a, it's only become a conversation recently in Hollywood. Where they're like, why are they so... Because, like, you know, they've kind of broken down, like, well, you know, I think the big one they had to get past was, like, no more casting white people as, like, Native Americans in yes. Westerns and stuff. Uh, and then you get down to, like, okay, Vasquez, I probably shouldn't have done that. But uh, Vasquez but, has a positive portrayal, at least. Mm, but I know now it's getting down to, like, um, people saying, like, old Jewish actors. You're getting a lot of Gentiles playing Jewish characters and stuff. I think it's got to a point now where like, you probably shouldn't do that either because it's kind of like it's a real, it's a very, very like dense cultural thing like where it's like you can kind of tell a Jewish person because they've grown up in the culture and then someone who just doesn't look or sound or act like it. But, but then that might be potentially going in the opposite direction. I've yeah. like, yeah, so it's a bit of... It's a bit of a dicey kind of trailer. It is it's one of those ones like, I'm, I'm, I'm staying out of it. I think, really. And then but, this movie, we've got a bunch of white guys as ninjas. Mm. 
terrible. Hey, Hus- Husker dude there really advertised <laughs> it for this. Uh, we might as well then consult the drinking game. Yeah. Now, I forgot to actually write this down. So mm. I'm just literally going to look at it now. There's two fist pumps. Mm-hmm. Are you are you counting Husker dude's uh, fist pumps? I'm or? counting the fist pumps. He's fist pumping, nice. baby. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, feel free to make your own rule here, listeners. Uh, one drink or two. I'm going to have one because you know we have to record shows. You you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to go to work or whatever. Nobody cares about that. Let's uh, hang on one. Ah, there we go. And shirtless dudes. Now, <laughs> again. Are oh, we going to yeah. do one yeah. drink? If you want to do multiple people, I mean, most of the band are shirtless. Uh, so let's mm. look. How many have we got? One, two, three. Is it three shirtless or four? Uh, I think it's three. Because it's, it's only... Yeah, because Mark isn't. He's still wearing his gi. He's too modest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the rest of it, it's... I'm <laughs> just trying to think of any name again with a J. So it's <laughs> Jim, John, and Joe. The, the rest <laughs> of the guys. So have a drink. Right. And then, of course, we're seeing a dragon sound song. Technically, yeah. it's meant to be you see a song the whole way through, but we're going minute by minute, so that will never happen. Mm-hmm. So who cares? Take one more drink. Ah, bliss. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely, jubbly. And and that's it for this episode's drinking game, anyway. Well, I had only fools and horses talk earlier. <laughs> it really took a talk at all on you there, John. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no, this uh, is going to be very, like, again, American audiences are not going to get that reference. <laughs> we're going to do an Only Fools and Horses podcast to make Americans appreciate it. That's what we're going to do. Uh, even though it's not by any means my favourite show. I've I, I actually, during the pandemic, when I was uh, stuck back in Ireland, I was like I was flipping around TV <laughs> during the day because there's nothing else to do. Uh, I remember watching, re-watching some old Fools and Horses. I'm like, this show really stands up. Like, yeah, it's yeah. actually still really funny. <laughs> That's why it's actually surprising it didn't sort of break it in America, I think, where other things like Faulty Towers did. Mm, mm. Because I would argue Only Fools and Horses is probably bigger because it it lasted longer. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. both kind of similarly um, regarded, um, but, it, but there was a lot more of it. <laughs> yeah. And plus, it's still, it's still on, like, every day mm. on some certain channels in U- the UK. There will always be... Like you turn on the TV at any time of the day and scroll through Sky or like you know the, the cable stations or whatever, you'll find Only Fools and Horses somewhere. It's always yeah. on all the time. <laughs> um, Whereas Faulty Towers, not so much. You know, it'll appear every once in a while, but it's not like it's not on a, on a constant cycle. Well, Dragon Sound should be on a constant cycle. Mm, this show mm. is. <laughs> well, that's, that's why. That's why the house band they think they like, get these guys in and make them play all the goddamn time. Four gigs a day. Yeah. Five days a week. Maybe they get the B-52s who are just like, oh, wait, they we're going to have to insist that these... <laughs> My friend from the B-52s impression apparently needs a lot of work. Though, cause of no, the... that's all you do to do, Fred, is just go like a weird little nasally, like, rah, noises. Rah. Now it's turning like... into, like, what was it, Waluigi? <laughs> so... <laughs> I was going to say the penguin. But... <laughs> Waluigi basically is the penguin, but skinny. Uh, they're making this uh, Mario movie with Chris Pratt and whatnot. To say them not too late to cast uh, Fred from B-52s as well, Luigi. So. Maybe that's why the band are quitting. He's like, well, I'm going to be busy. He's like, I'm just clearly going to launch me into the stratosphere. <laughs> you said that when we're doing that damn Flintstones theme tune 30 years ago. And we went nowhere. Best part of that movie, except for Carl no. McLaughlin, obviously. Mm. And just the pun of Halle Berry's character been named Sharon Stone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> That really was like the only reason they made the movie was to make that joke. Oh, Flintstones minute coming soon. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that isn't a thing already. No, let's let's just be controversial and we'll just do the sequel. What was it Viva Rock Vegas? We're like we're not yeah. doing the original one. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready to um, break the connection as as it were. Oh, I think it upsets is that, me. Is that we like, we've officially landed on? Is that the, the thing we say? Yeah, at the end? we can say what we want. This is our show, not yours, listeners. We can say what we want. We're going to break the connection, which breaks my heart every week when we break this connection, because it's a it's a connection born of love and friendship and family, mm. much like the connections in this movie. Oh, why am I getting into? I'm turning into an American talk show kind of uh, 
like a Doctor Phil or something. <laughs> no, he's a bit. He's a bit of a prick. He was like a nice no, no, one. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's nice the. One. I think he's in the bad books now. Yeah, Dr. Phil. yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying to think of American shit shows. I don't fucking know. It's <laughs> Sally, Jesse, Raphael, all those programs used to be on. You know, they'd always do that little bit at the end where they, mm. they talk to the camera. Jerry Springer used to do it. Yeah. The Jerry Springer's are always good, though. He always had, like, oh, yeah, there's quite a profound thought there, Jerry. But... <laughs> yeah, considering the rest of the show was a fucking trash fire, that yeah. end, like, minute was like, oh, that's quite nice. <laughs> it felt like that was, like, it was a thing out of obligation or something to the network or, like, to... To like tax people or something it's like you have to throw in something that's vaguely like educational or has some sort of importance to it and like okay okay i'll make some effort in the, my final thought fine <laughs> well that was john's final thought uh we will depart we will head off now where i was gonna say down the road to the next gig but they only gig in this one venue so yes. <laughs> uh, to, we're gonna head back to the dojo and uh, join us on facebook at miami minutes taekwondo orphanage Find us Twitter, Instagram, all of that nonsense. Uh, head to our website, miamiminutes.kim. And why not look up our network, Sleepy Charlie Media, on Patreon to get just more nonsense of me and Niall. You can get um, yeah. us talking about Batman stuff, but also other movies. We uh, yeah. do a couple of commentary tracks as well. We got the vertical limit again, as mentioned earlier in this very episode. Yeah, we did yeah. A, an episode all about that. Episode of that coming as well. I'll be out by the time you uh, hear this. So mm. check all that out and join us again next week for more exciting martial arts action on Miami Minutes. Listen to me. Listen to me.